Good evening everybody, this is Angie and I'm going to read to you today from my favorite magazine, Attitude Magazine, that's A-D-D-I-T-U-D-E and also they are online at attitudemag.com. I am not sponsored or in any way affiliated with the magazine or any of its writers. I just love the magazine, and I love to share this um, this information with you all. It is for educational purposes only. No copyright infringement is intended. I'm going to read to you today an article called Self-Esteem Boosters That Can Change Your Life. Adults with ADHD can build self-confidence in their golden years. Here's a plan to do it by Peter Jaxa, Ph.D. Research on self-esteem in adults without ADHD shows chronological patterns of change. For most people, self-esteem rises steadily as they age from their 20s to their 70s, with a peak around 60 years old. There are many reasons for this trend. Rising level of expertise and success in work and career, achieving long-term goals, and enjoying more financial security. With age comes a greater sense of succeeding in life. But for many adults with ADHD, self-esteem decreases as they grow into middle age and approach retirement age. And there are reasons for this trend. They have a sense of frustration and underachievement and see themselves as failing in comparison to their peers. Many feel helpless and hopeless after years of efforts at behavior change that never worked out. Many feel financial insecurity because their money management was erratic at best, and long-term financial planning simply did not get done. Symptom control is key. The core beliefs that shape self-esteem are determined by whether a person appreciates and likes himself or is frustrated and self-critical. If ADHD is not managed well, the cumulative record of frustrations, criticisms, real and perceived failures, self-blaming, and guilt turn self-esteem into rubble. Over time, very low self-esteem can lead to depression, anxiety, substance abuse, and other serious problems. When ADHD is managed well, this erosion of self-esteem can be prevented. The emotional damage can be repaired and reversed. None of us is a prisoner of our past, and it is never too late to change. One of the harmful aspects of low self-esteem is the loss of self-confidence in oneself to change and grow. This feeling can be overcome, but it takes work and persistence. To get unstuck, adults with ADHD have to take daily steps, realistic, doable, and healthy steps toward positive outcomes. Two-step treatment process. Repairing self-esteem erosion requires two essential things. The first is a program of treatment and ADHD management that gives a person a fighting chance to manage the ADHD biology and behaviors reasonably, not perfectly, well. This is critical to ending the cycle of frustration and sense of failure. An effective treatment program includes medication if needed, behavior therapy, coaching, and a regimen of self-care behaviors, including exercise, healthy sleep, and good nutrition. Without commitment and follow-through, the self-esteem battle is like swimming upstream against a very strong current. Success does indeed breed success, so find ways to take small steps forward. The second part is to recognize, challenge, and dismiss the negative thinking that comes with low self-esteem. Even when these negative messages feel natural, they must not be accepted as normal or healthy. View these messages as cognitive distortions. The battle for stronger self-esteem will be long, but it is a battle that can be won. Peter Jaxa, Ph.D., and I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing his name wrong, is a clinical psychologist in Chicago, Illinois. He has worked with adults and children with ADHD for the past 35 years. He is the author of Life with ADHD and Real People, Real ADHD, 
you can contact Peter at addcenters.com. And again, I'm not in any way sponsored or affiliated with this magazine or the authors. I just love sharing this information and realize that not everybody has access to the magazine or to reading or whatever reason um, they don't have access to this information. Sometimes it's just easier for people to hear information than to read it. So I just like to put out their information I feel is important. Also on the same page at the end of this article, there's kind of like a side note here. It's a list of things to win the battle against negative thinking. Here are some strategies and exercises to brighten your life with ADHD. Understand and accept your ADHD biology and focus on changing your behavior. Do not think of ADHD as a negative label that means you are broken. When ADHD becomes a stigma applied to you or to any other person with ADHD, it is destructive to self-esteem and self-worth. ADHD is not a character defect, and this is very important. Nor is it a disease that can be cured. It is a set of neurobiological symptoms that can be managed. You know, the way the world works is not cut out for the way our brains think or work, per se. So we have to realize and recognize that, yes, we are the way we are meant to be. But, you know, there are challenges that we have to work through and overcome to help survive in this world that is not cut out for us. And we kind of have to carve our own path and make it work for us. And the next item on this list is, it is never too late to learn to manage ADHD better. Don't adopt the excuse that I've tried everything. That is never true. And I feel like I'm discovering that for myself as in my medication journey, trying to find the right medications to help me with this and finding practitioners that will listen to me and understand, finding practitioners that believe that ADHD exists and know about it. All these things have taught me that you just have to be persistent and keep on keeping on. Every time I get rejected or not listened to or, you know, passed off to another practitioner, I don't give up. It's frustrating and I throw my hands up in the air sometimes. But I always come back around and, and keep working and keep fighting to get, you know, the treatment and the medication that I know will work to help me um, with these challenges. So that is a very good point. It's never too late to manage ADHD better and never adopt the excuse that I've tried everything. That is never true. Just keep on keeping on. Okay, the next thing on the list is Identify and appreciate your accomplishments. If you have difficulty doing this, ask two or three people who know you well for their honest opinions. Assess your strengths and weaknesses. Again, if this is hard, seek outside opinions. Appreciate your strengths. Set realistic and healthy goals and work on areas of weakness. We all have them. That is so important. Both of those points are very important. Appreciate your good accomplishments. Assess your strengths and weaknesses. Um, a lot of us with ADHD are very hard on ourselves. Um, we hold ourselves to expectations that just are not realistic. And there's a lot of shame that comes with the way our brains work um, due to sig stigma, societal stigma. And you have to realize that it's just not true. You're not lazy. You're not whatever society wants to call you. It's just you have ADHD, and that is a neurobiological condition. So appreciate your accomplishments and assess your strengths and weaknesses and, and get a, honest opinions from some someone you trust. Uh, that can really help. 
identify, monitor, challenge, and dismiss your critical self-talk, which is the same as what I was just saying. Treat it as an ongoing battle to be waged as long as it takes. It will get easier over time with practice and persistence. Don't compare yourself to other people. This is always a bad idea, and most of the time it leads to a negative scenario. People with low self-esteem almost always see themselves as inferior. Um, that's true for me as well. I've always saw myself as inferior or that everyone else knows better than me or knows more than me. And that's very common in people with inattentive ADHD, like myself. Next item on the list, focus on solutions, not problems. Once you identify a problem, the next question should be, what can I do about it? And that is something I've learned in my process of, you know, learning that I have ADHD inattentive type and learning more about it and seeking answers, um, trying to get the proper treatment for it. It's really helped me learn to move on to the next question. What can I do about it? instead of just focusing on the problem because it's so easy to get lost in the problem because of everything you've faced and everything you've been through up until now, especially if you've gone undiagnosed your whole life. Um, it's a big problem and it, it's there's a lot of pain and scars involved, inabilities and disabilities involved, and it's huge. It's a huge problem and it's hard to work through. So you just got to remind yourself, what can I do about it? You know, just keep thinking of that next step, next question. Which is difficult for those of us with ADHD. But just remember, at the next question should always be, what can I do about it? Get past the could have done, should have done, would have done scripts. My mom always used to tell me growing up, Forget about the couldas, wouldas, and shouldas. And it's really good advice. Forget about the things you haven't done. Focus on the things you can do day by day. Um, it just adds, I feel it adds more to the clutter of my mind when I keep focusing on the couldas, wouldas, and shouldas. Um, instead of just take things day by day, focus on the moment. Again, that's hard of for us, those of us with ADHD. Seek out positive relationships. Do not isolate socially or emotionally. Spend time with people who get who you are and accept you. Again, great advice. Um, unfortunately, going my whole life without being diagnosed up until recently this year, that's been what I've done. I'm a professional social isolator. <laughs> I hide and you know any literature you read about women with inattentive ADHD you'll find that's common is conversation and things get so complicated with the way our brains work um, there's shame involved there's guilt involved there's embarrassment involved so we just get used to hiding and not wanting to socialize uh, for fear of ridicule or being embarrassed or being judged and I do have people in my life who, who get me and accept me. And it's hard to remember that and realize that. Um, but whenever I start feeling down or feeling isolated, I remember those people who have made me feel, who have made me feel like, like they get me and accept me. And lastly, take good care of your body. Sleep, exercise, nutrition, each will impact your mood dramatically. And this is all true. I've experienced good effects from, from all these things. But it's not the end-all be-all, I have to say. And don't solely rely on that um, because ADHD is more complicated than that. But it is a help. It is a help. You know, a Band-Aid can help stop the bleeding. So there's nothing wrong with a Band-Aid. <laughs> it is a help. But it may not help the underlying cause of the bleeding and again we don't want to cure for ADHD we just need help overcoming some of our challenges but embrace your brain for all that it is and the way it functions 
because it just functions differently, not less, and the society is cut out for non-ADHD brains. The, the society is cut out for non-neurodivergent brains. So we just have to make our own way. And that comes with lots of challenges, but we can do it. All right, I hope this information is helpful for to you. I hope you have a great day, and until next time, peace.